Oh, hey y'all, how's it going? Fatty here, and today I'm bringing you a chandelier build guide. It's been a requested video for a little bit, and let's not waste any more of your time and jump straight into it. So for anyone who's really unfamiliar with the term chandelier, all it really is is a cliff platform turret tower. These are really great for elevated bases, things that just don't sit on the ground, right? Things that are at like a vertical raid or even on like the side of a cliff, anything like that. That's what this is. So what you're going to really need to get started on this is going to be a cliff platform, a generator, 12 foundations, 36 hatch frames, 65 pillars, 36 ceilings, an ammo box, and at least 72 turrets. Now the turrets can kind of vary a little bit depending on the build, what stage you're at, different stuff like that. On this one, it is a full 360 chandelier. Not all of them are like this. I'm going to show you a couple more examples of chandeliers that are defending my King Rat base on my current PvP season. And those ones uh, do have about the same amount of turrets, but it's not a 360, so they're a little bit more cramped. This one down here, I don't have as many, and it is a 360 just because it's so close to the water, it could be like Baleo or soaked or anything like that. So it's not as important, it's just one of those ones that's just kind of making it slow down, take a lot longer for people to get there. So some of that is going to vary on your part. Now, when I did do this, I did do it on an unofficial setting, and all of this will be applied to official as well. If the only thing that might caveat is sometimes the hatch frames will kind of um, register like they're clipping into each other. I didn't have a too hard of a time. I built this like this on small tribes, had no issue. But if this is an issue, you can kind of just take out one of the spacings in between as we get a little further on and it'll make a lot of sense. And just a little bit of extra space will allow the hatch frame to be there. And you can always put the additional turrets you still need on those hatch frames. And yeah, don't worry about that, but let's go into the very step-by-steps to first get started. So I always put down a couple turrets to defend after I get the generator going, and I don't really tend to do a chandelier if I haven't already unlocked a tech generator. It just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to worry about junction boxes or anything like that being exposed, because that can take down a chandelier with the flame arrow if you don't completely hide them. So honestly, center boss fight is super easy. If you haven't already, I got a video how to do that with just a on and a shotgun, so go check that out. Get the tech generator, it's highly recommended. So once you do, you wanna get the foundations and each of these like flat areas on the edge, there's a, like a, a metal bar that's leading through the edge and you wanna line up the middle of the foundation with that right up against the edge. And that's gonna be the basis for all the parts that are gonna go down. And then from there, I like to go and just put a single pillar kind of on top of all of them. What this is gonna do is create the snap points to go down below as well up above. And if you put a turret in the way, just, you know, pick it up, move it like I did, because I wasn't really thinking when I was putting those down. I was just really nervous that someone was going to come raid me because 10 Psycho Bobs keep saying that they're going to white me and shooting my chandeliers with mechs because, ooh, super effective. Sorry, got to trash talk them a little bit. Anyways, so you put the pillars around everywhere you go, and that's going to be able to let you kind of build down below. So as soon as you do that, you just kind of got to drop down below. If you aren't at tech yet, you get a Quetzal. You can also use like a Snow Owl or an RG. kind of helps you just be there. But I usually drop at least two or three down below just to start off with. And the key with these pillars is you you want them just to be uh, attached to the center because then it also attaches to the cliff plat. So if the foundation is actually destroyed too. It will still clip to the, found, or the cliff plat, which is super nice. And the caveat with this, not caveat, the kind of funny thing about this is with the ceilings, you have to have a couple pillars below it. I believe it's at least two below your snap point before it'll let you build the ceiling. So what you really got to do is just kind of put these down and get the couple extra just to start off. When I build these, I always build them layer by layer because I always end up, somebody comes around right when I'm building these, like every, every time, I swear. So what I do is just get this first round and then once you do that, then it's time to bust out the ceilings, fly around and get those ceilings put in a good place. Oh, actually first, ammo box. These are the best things that they added. I always set it just to 10 at the very start when I'm getting these um, just going. You can put your ammo in there and the really nice thing is as you're putting up turrets, as soon as you activate them, they'll pull the ammo from that, which makes it really nice. So you don't have to go around worrying trying to fill them at the same time. Have that put down first because then it'll fill them. So I don't like to put the ceiling at the very top. Like I said, put it down one. That gives your turrets a little bit of room to, you know, not get blocked by the line of sight. You're gonna hear a term LOS from me a lot. That just means line of sight. When you're building these turret towers, that's gotta be like one of your main priorities is making sure there's not a lot of things that are gonna be able to LOS. Because if people get too close, they might be able to get a weird angle where the turrets don't see it and they can just shoot it with a tech rifle or something. But if you make sure that there's nothing that's gonna block the line of sight of the turrets, you're gonna be fine. 
So like I said, once you get those ceilings down, then it's gonna be time for those hatch frames. Now, I like to put my hatch frames in the back. I've seen some people put them like that, where they kind of sit up at the top a little bit in the front. Now, again, if we're kind of talking about not wanting them to clip, you can kind of put them out further like that. And I think that will also help instead of like just spacing it out if they do end up clipping on each other on like official settings and stuff like that. But I always like to keep them a little bit closer. And I don't know, I think it's just a security thing. It makes me feel like they're harder to take down. But at the end of the day, I don't really think it matters. I've seen and been with so many tribes that they kind of do it both ways that it's just not that big of a deal to go about it, whatever really method that you need to. But then yeah, I always do, like I said, one layer at a time. So I'll go around, put hatch frames down on all of these, and then I'll put my first round of turrets. Usually just start out with one turret on each one of them, just to kind of give that little layer of protection. And then once I get a little bit more down, then I just continue to expand out with more turrets. So like I said, just putting down a couple turrets and that's how they autofill. It's really nice to do that. Just make sure you do. So then jumping ahead from there and just kind of putting it down. It's just the same process. I always leave at least one um, ceiling space. So if you can put a ceiling in between on the pillars, don't like leave that space, drop down one. It just works out better. Like I said, you won't LOS stuff as much. Then on this one, uh, one key thing I did is I always put a couple heavies and a couple um, tech turrets kind of facing towards the middle. Sometimes people get a really good like Bloodstalker or crazy grapple and they can kind of get up underneath the cliff plat a little bit. Just a couple of these turrets will do it because those guys are never really heavily, heavily armored or, you know, they can't really survive for very long. So, you know, having, oh, since there's 12 of these uh, towers coming down, there'd be 12 heavy shooting at them. It's gonna be impossible for anybody to really get underneath and do any damage for you there. Then from that point, you're pretty much there. I always like to go up at least one above the chandelier too, just to make sure that no one's gonna come up from above. This one is really low to the ground, so that's kind of a possibility on this one. You won't see this one on my most upper chandelier because it is on King Rat, which is like so high up that they can't get above it without getting shot, so that's not really a concern. So you have to think about when you're kind of building these, how would somebody else rate it, right? So on this one, if 10 Psycho Blondes you're watching this, here's a little hint for you, you bobs, is there's a lot of these cliff, pla cliff, platform, cliff platforms above here. So they could probably get a good LOS, like get above here with a tech Stego or uh, like, yeah, Stego, whatever, and start to soak or even drop down from above and like on here, they could skiff it in, you know, that's always an option. They could Karkonos it in if they got on one of those cliff flats because those are spam just to stop people from fobbing actually underneath here. So that's always an option. So something like this is gonna be your best defense to protect you from anything from above as well. And then if you are at a point where you have a tech force field, I didn't at the time of recording this chandelier video, which was like a week ago or so, um, this would be a really good one to have a tech force field. You just wanna tuck it on the really center part of here and then just keep the range the lowest you can so it protects the bottom part of the cliff platform and parts of the cliff platform in the generator but doesn't get anywhere close to where the turrets are you I mean you can have it like butt up near the back of them but you don't want them to be behind the the tech force field wall or anything like that and on most builds um you know i do a 50 50 split between survivors only and uh survivors and tames and I kind of mix it up. I don't keep it like super uniform. I just try to keep it about 50-50. You definitely want some of your tech ones to be on survivors only a little bit higher. That's going to really help you with like people on tech stagos and stuff. It's just make it a little bit harder for them because it's going to be blasting them. They're going to take splash damage and it's going to go after them specifically. But by no means do never, never have them all on only survivors because then people can strap C4 to carcan or crabs or crabs, uh, turtles and carbs and then just blow it up as well. It just makes it a lot harder. So always do about a 50-50 split, um, just depending on your resources and what your capability is. I usually do about 50-50 too between techs and heavies. Um, but you know, it's always up to you, you know, techs are a lot harder. So if you need to do a little bit more of a split, like one to three, that is good. Um, I would just always put the tech in the middle and then the two heavies on the outside, but it's really up to you. The turret configuration really kind of varies depend, hang, depending on what you need. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this build guide is helpful for you guys. If you guys want anything like this in the future or like a specific cave location or any kind of build guides, let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in the very next video. Peace.